In tribal communities in the American Southwest, pottery takes shape much as it has for 2,000 years. In the hands of native artisans, mud becomes a cooking pot or a storage vessel. No pottery wheel necessary, no kiln required, just a roaring campfire. Times may change, but in the American Southwest, tribal culture is true to its roots. Creating pots that look like ancient artifacts, except they're new. Crafted from local clay, the pots are both lightweight and durable, and their appeal is truly timeless. The potter gathers her own clay. This is micaceous clay from volcanic deposits in New Mexico. She also mines minerals like iron oxide to paint the pottery. In its raw form, micaceous clay sparkles in the sunlight. Its natural glitter will make the finished pottery shimmer. She picks out leaves and tree roots because anything organic will outgas and cause the pottery to crack. She transfers the clay to a bucket of water. After three or four days, it dissolves and she filters it to remove smaller contaminants. Once the clay thickens to a gravy-like consistency, she transfers it to a fabric-lined mold. She leaves it to set and coagulate to a dough-like consistency. She needs a chunk of it to remove air bubbles. She then shapes it into a bowl. It will serve as the base of a traditional storage pot. She scrapes the pot base inside and out to thin it as it dries. The thinning process also works the clay into a harder state. She moistens the lip of the bowl to make it malleable and flattens the edge, creating a foundation to build up the pot. She now rolls another piece of clay into a long thin strand and coils it around the pot. She blends the strand into the pot base and then shapes it to extend the pot upward. The process is called coiling. She continues to build up the coils, blending them until they become completely enmeshed and seamless to the rest of the pot. As she coils and blends, she turns the pot inward, creating a shoulder near the top. She smooths the lip and thins the extensions to ensure the thickness is consistent. This will prevent structural weaknesses. In the hands of a skilled artisan, a lump of clay has become a pot. But there's more work to be done. She narrows the opening. She cuts the lip in six symbolic orientations, representing north, south, east and west, the sky and the earth. She scallops the edge in the direction of the cuts to accentuate them. She smooths the pot with a wet sponge. Before dawn, when the wind is low, she lights a fire and places the pots directly into it. She stacks wood around the pots and flames engulf them. This changes the clay's molecular structure so that it can never turn back into sticky mud. She covers the fire with a metal tub. The flames subside and the pots cool. Curing clay over an open fire isn't an exact science. Heat is uneven and this causes fracturing. 20% of these clay pots will be damaged. She examines them carefully and rejects anything that is not intact. In addition to the micaceous clay pots, she also fires some red clay ones. She paints geometric motifs onto those, using the mineral paint she's prepared herself. Each pot is one of a kind. Quality varies depending on the nature of the clay and smoke patterns created during firing. She leaves the pots made of micaceous clay unpainted for traditional reasons. She signs the base and includes the name of her tribe. She tucks her biographical information into it. She's been making pottery since childhood. From a handful of mud to a storage vessel or cooking pot, Southwest native pottery continues to be a triumph of ingenuity.